13, uh, simple linear regression. And as, the, as an, the numbers we're going to use to demonstrate and talk about the different concepts of the chapter, there's a you know, handful, like five major concepts, is, as I said last time, we're trying to learn how to relate two continuous variables, where one is considered an independent variable, and the other is called a dependent variable, because it's assumed to depend upon, in a linear way, the, uh, the other variable. And a good example that relates to business majors is advertising and sales, because you'd expect the more advertising goes into a company, the more sales they're going to have, even though one could argue it goes in the opposite direction. If you're a really rich company, which has a lot of sales, you can afford a lot of advertising. So it's not clear which direction it goes in, but we're going to assume the simple case that the advertising has a, at least hypothetically, a, a direct impact on the sales. Okay, so what are the numbers we're going to use to demonstrate all the formulas, including the stuff that we just finished doing? Um, so, so a company puts in $1,000 worth of advertising and gets $2,000 back in sales. A company puts in $3,000, maybe it's a chain, and they just pick four, 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 four franchises from the chain and got $4,000. So it looks so far that it's, the bigger the advertising, the bigger the sales. Next one is four and six. But the last one is a little bit of a, no, also more two and five. So what did we say last time? We said the first thing we're going to try to do is to um, graph it. So we're going to put X or advertising, Y or sales. It starts with 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Eight, nine. And the first point, one on the x, two on the y, so the first dot is here. Three on the x, four on the y, so the second dot is here. Four on the x, six on the y is here. And two on the x, five on the y is here. The next thing we're going to try to do before we learn the formula is to try to freehand it. Now, is the best possible line like this? With four dots, it's really hard to tell. In fact, or would you say the best possible line is like this? I think most people, without taking a vote of the class, I think most people would say that this happens to be a pretty good fit of the straight line, something like that. I don't think anybody would say, well, that's, that's a ridiculous choice. If I put a line over here, for, that's crazy. But if I put a line over here, but here is pretty reasonable. The next thing is to estimate this, the equation y equals mx plus b. But before we do that, I have to unfortunately give you guys bad news, even though everybody knows that equation already from many years of using it, we're going to change it in this particular chapter. Instead of calling it y, we're going to call it y hat. Did I mention this last time? I don't think so, no. Instead of calling it b, we're going to put the b at the beginning of the equation, and we're going to call it b sub 0. That's not too much of a difference. And the thing that's next to the x, the slope, which is next to the x, we'll put that at the end of the equation. And instead of calling it mx, we're going to call it b1x. So somebody will say, well, do we have a different equation? No, it's the exact same equation. This is the intercept. That's the slope, the thing next to the x. And the question is, why, why do we make these changes? If everybody knows this equation, why should I make you have to study or memorize a new equation? Well, there's a couple of reasons for it. The first reason is that this represents the straight line, the y hat. This is the equation, y hat. Now, why can't I call it y? Why, uh, why, why do they have to change the symbol from y to a different symbol? I put a little hat on top. Called the estimated y, the predicted y. Mr. Zagaro, I forgot your first name, but yes. Yeah, because the data is called y. The, the dots, this dot's y equals 2, y equals 5, y equals 4. So y represents the actual data. But the straight line is not the data. The, the straight line is the middle of the data, but it's not the data. It's related to it. So that's very good. Why am I calling this B0 and a B1 instead of M and B? There's no way you can know this unless you know the next chapter. Anybody know? Anybody want to take a lucky guess on that one? OK. The answer is that in the next chapter, we're going to learn how to extend this from simple linear regression involving 1x and 1y to something called multiple regression of many x's and 1y. So we're going to have a similar equation. Instead of having, you know, m1 times x, and so we'll set in, the, in the next chapter, the equation is going to be y hat equals b0, it'll still be one intercept, plus b1 times x1, 
B2 times X2, B3 times X3, B4 times X4. So it's a very simple extension to this chapter if we start calling this B1 times, well, you can call it X1 if you like, but it's only one X, so there's no point. Okay, so that's the reason for the change. The next thing we did last time was to try to estimate the intercept. What would you guess? Without, before you even learn the formula, how would you guess, what would you guess it to be? Yes, Kelvin? 1.3 from this picture, but it turns out if you'll, if I put that 1.3, that's fine, but uh, if I made a better picture with a straight line, it's going to be clear, you know, 1.5, because you don't try to, you know, it's 1.5. So I'm not, not putting too many words in your mouth. This comes out to 1.5. So y hat equals 1.5. And what do you think the slope is? Now, just here already, the x and y have exactly the same scale, so a 45 degree line would be, would be like that. Oh, I screwed it up, because, which, which looks steeper, the 45 degree line or my, my line? Yeah, the 45 degree looks in my line looks like it's less steep. But it turns out if I made the, the picture more carefully, which I'm, not, I'm too lazy to do right now, it's going to, and you may, some, some of you guys might have done it in your notes, if you make it more carefully, it turns out it is more steep. So I, it's, it's unfortunate it just happened that way. But it turns out when I do the picture right, people tell me that the slope got to be a little bit bigger than 1. Somebody, okay, 1.1 times x. And I'm putting down these numbers because when we plug the numbers into the formula, this happens to be the exactly the perfect answer. It's not just that, you know, so in fact, when the first time I did this, somebody guessed the right answer. The point I'm trying to make is that it, it is guessable. In other words, you can look at the picture and come up with a pretty good guess just by knowing some basics. Okay, so now, the next step is how to calculate. How, and now we're, now, we're, now we're beyond the baby stuff of guessing and playing, you know, playing 20 questions. Now we can basically go to the formula and come up with the exact amount for B0 and the exact amount for B1 by the formula. This is an important part of, of, the, of, the, of today's discussion. So before the formula can tell you what the best possible B0 and B1 is, remember, these are the two unknowns. You, know, you, have, a, you, have, a, you have a bunch of dots, and you're taking a straight line with a ruler, and you're trying to fit the best possible straight line. What does the best possible straight line mean? The line, because any, a, a straight line is determined by its slope and its intercept. So knowing those two numbers basically solves the problem for us. So before we can have the, expect the formula to give us an answer, we have to tell, we have to know how would you recognize the best possible straight line? For example, how would you know, realize this is ridiculous, this straight line does not fit the data at all. And this straight line is pretty good, maybe this straight line is even better. How do you know, how would you recognize the best straight line when you see it? What's the criteria, or criterion, or criteria for, let's say criterion, for the pos best possible straight line? That's the question. Yes, Paul. Okay, now, that was the, the, the thing I erased before, I think I forget, maybe Kim did it, that she had three dots, one, one, part, one line went right through three dots, but it missed the other point. So it's not so much going through the most number of points. If you did that, you might get a line like this. You know, you wanted to, the second answer you gave is better. It got to be closer to the most number of points, which is a very, very rough way of saying it. But the more exact, now without, we can, if we spent 20, you know, for half an hour talking back and forth, we probably would come to the final answer. So what does it mean to be closest to? It means closest to in the sense of, it's a pity I, I wrote this, made this other line on top of it, which I got to get rid of. Okay, so this is the, the one part, this is the one line we came up with. And get rid of the 45 degree line. Okay, this is the one line we came up with. Now, why is this line supposedly the best possible line? Because if you take the distance between the line, which is here, and the actual data, this distance, and the vertical line distance makes a lot of sense in this context, that distance is minimized. So what you have to have, for example, a line like this, it has a much bigger there. I don't, I don't want to mess up the picture. But the point is, you're trying to figure out, you play with a ruler until the computer does it for you, the formula does it for you. You can do it by trial and error, really. Keep calculating how far the dots are to the straight line. In this particular case, when you minimize this, you know, this plus this plus this plus this comes out to a minimum, you solve your problem. The problem with that, so let's write that mathematically. We want to figure out, again, these are the unknowns. We want to figure out a slope with an intercept that minimizes that distance. What's that distance? Well, y minus y hat represents the difference between the y and the data. But we don't want to do it just for one point, because you, don't, you, don't, you, know, you want to show that if you take this plus this plus this plus this, so you want to sum it across many points, all the points, that they, and you want to minimize this. So you want to minimize this. So minimize 
the sum. But the problem is, the way that mathematics work out, and the way we've seen this before in other chapters, the dots below the line, the dots above the line will always cancel out. You're always going to get a value of zero. So how, how do we solve the problem of getting a value of zero always?